Hey guys, as many of you know, based on our name, we have the Green Up Academy, which is your place to go for courses, community, and coaching uh, in the landscape industry. But I want to specifically talk for just a minute about our crew program, which is our community groups here through the academy, where you get Zoom calls, direct access to me, and a lot of community with other guys on how to grow your business. It's been absolutely transformational. We have so many great testimonies, so many guys who are just seeing leaps and bounds uh, their businesses grow and also the things that we can help them with. So we have a couple spots left that we'd love for you to consider. We'll give you your first month free if that helps you. Um, just use code uh, GREENUP at checkout um, and we will absolutely do that. Or if you DM us or email us, we'll certainly apply that. Um, but we're starting our second group soon, so you don't want to miss those spots before they fill up. Check us out, the Green Up Academy and the crew. Thank you guys so much. Welcome to the Green Up Academy podcast with Alex Kirby, where we focus on helping you level up your green industry business. Whether it's marketing, finance, employees, or strategy, we talk about everything on this show to help you apply it to your business and change your family and company's future for decades to come. Here's your host, Alex Kirby. What's up, guys? Alex from the Green Up Academy podcast, where we help you level up your green industry business. This is going to be part two of my conversation with Ben Bishop, who is a consultant and was and is about to be another green industry pro starting his business back in 2025 um, in the Furt and Squirt world. So Ben loved our part one. If you haven't listened, go make sure you listen to that first, then check this episode out. This one, we're ta- we talked more about business in the first episode and philosophies, and this one we're talking about more about uh, personal development, personal thoughts, and how to be a great business owner on the personal side and not just the business side. So you guys are going to enjoy this. Really enjoyed my conversation here with Ben Bishop. Have you seen it? I like what you're saying because to me it's like, hey, we can we can develop – a lot of people can develop good businessmen, yeah. but we're here to develop good men. Right. Off the mower, outside the office. I love that. And it's – this world needs more of that, to be honest. Well, and that that's uh, – so I was a part of a group – I'll stop and we'll start talking – called C12, which is a Christian – have you heard of C12? I have not. Uh, it's, kind, it's kind of blowing up. It's a Christian CEO, like, master group. So, like, once a month, me and 12 guys would meet, 12 women or men, and um, it's for business owners and executives um, who want to lead godly businesses and stuff. And so – C12, huh? Oh yeah, it's it's growing like wildfire. Um, it's not cheap, but basically the premise is business as a ministry is their phrase. So how do you make your business a ministry just like anything else? And then two is who teaches someone to be a CEO? No one. There's no CEO course. There's no master class, right? So that we get in the same room and we all learn how to be CEOs together. So um, God's way. So it's really really cool. So. That spurred on me this idea for the Green Up Academy, which is like, who's teaching business owners how to lead businesses as a ministry? Like, you're just trying to figure out how to put food on the table. Like, you're not thinking about that. And next thing you know, it's been five years and you haven't impacted the kingdom of God in your business at all. Yeah. We just joined a new church. It's pretty interesting. And, and if we, Max, stop me if I need to. I mean, you guys stop me if we need no, to. No, we're good. This, we're good. No, we're good. But, you know, we just joined a new church in, uh, in February. And they talk a lot about building the kingdom of God. And I've never been in church my whole life, uh, multiple denominations my whole life, and never heard that term. Mm. And so 33 years old, sitting in the pew, guy throw, Justin Gamble, pastor down here, throws that out. And I was like, wait, what? What is that? My wife and I got in the car. And she's like, yeah, she's been a Methodist her whole life. Uh, we recently joined the Baptist church. She was like, I have never heard that. Like what we're doing is for the kingdom of God. How are you benefiting the kingdom of God today? And, and and I I find that, you know, I I find that that statement very interesting. And it's said that way. And a lot of people think, Oh, I'm just going to give 20 bucks here. That's great. Like if you can donate your money to tie the church, like obviously I do that, but I, I talk a lot about tithing my time now. And yeah. so, you know, that's something I can't get back. I can make more money. Okay. Right. It's easy. I'm going to make more in an hour. I'm going to make more in two hours. But 
I can't get time back. And so to me, yeah. being able to donate that, you know, two in two weeks, I'm taking a I'm, I'm taking a day off work. I'm teaching kids how to play sports at the church. That to me is donating time. And that 100%. is what I want to be able to do more of as I get older in life. So I, I, I grew up Baptist, did not give my life to Christ. So I went to college. Oh, and, we're uh, college. Newberry College. I played baseball. We play yeah. like Georgia College and State. And yeah. um, I tell people in Georgia, yeah, we play North Georgia, Georgia College and State, stuff like that. So play baseball in college. Um, redshirted. Didn't do good in school because I wasn't a believer yet. Barely kept, you know, stayed in. Met Christ third week of sophomore year. But so I ended up um, studying studying ministry in school there, but they didn't, long story, but they didn't teach the Bible at all. And so I get my first job and I didn't really hear, I had heard like the kingdom of God growing up, but I never explained. And my favorite verse is Matthew six thirty three, which is seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness and all things will be added to you. Mm-hmm. And that, and that was because when I was, I was early in my marriage and I was like, man, there are so many things I'm supposed to do well now in life. I'm supposed to be a good husband, a good minister, a good father, a good son. I'm supposed to get like, it was over. I don't get overwhelmed at all, but I was very overwhelmed with the thought of like, how am I supposed to do all these things? Well, and then I read <laughs> Matthew six thirty three, and that verse seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added was basically like, look, if you just build the kingdom, you don't have to worry about all that stuff. Yeah. If you, if you just seek God building God's kingdom, you will be, by default, you will be good husband, good father, good whatever, right? Yeah. So that verse is like means everything to me. Yeah. That, so then my wife and I, let me tell you this. I'll tell you where the kingdom thing comes from. Then my wife and I, four years ago, started going to an Assemblies of God church, which is Pentecostal, but not, there's two types of Pentecostal. I'm learning Church of God Assemblies. We're a little bit not as wild as they are. And we're like Baptocostal is what I tell people. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah. So like you, if you were, if you grew up Baptist, you pretty comfortable in there until like, there's a little bit of wild stuff that goes down. But, um, so anyways, that that's where they talk about the kingdom all the time. And, and it makes sense, right? Because if you think about like, what does building God's kingdom mean? Just like if you're building a house, the more rooms, the more people, the more land you can take, the more domain you can have. Like, that's the way, like when, it makes so much sense when I say it like that, right? I can yeah. see it on your face. Yeah. Like if you just think of it as simply as that, like not as abstract as like some castle kingdom thing. It's like, no, we're taking ground. We're adding people to to the family. Like we're building the kingdom. So that that's the way I say it. And it makes like a lot of sense to me, but yeah. could not be a bitter. Be- I say all that to say when you said building the kingdom, like I could not be more into the thought of building the kingdom. And going back to what we were talking about a little bit off air is like for guys listening, I became, I was always, when I started trifecta, I was very focused on how do I build the kingdom of God through this business? The issue was I was so zealous on building the business that I only did things for the first like five years of the seven. I would say I did the things I did. I did some things, but nothing well. Yeah. So we prayed together. I had some speakers come. I, I, I spoke to a lot of guys off air, like, Hey man, I can pray for you and all that. And those are all really good things, but none of them were super in depth or intentional. Mm-hmm. And so we definitely saw some fruit, not nothing like I'm ashamed of, but I was so focused on growing the company that secondary was me growing the kingdom. And I won't do that again. Like in our, in our, in green up and backbone, I'm fo- my marketing company. I am so focused um, or I'm trying to stay focused on how can we build the kingdom while we're building these businesses? How can we do this? Yeah. Um, how can we have not as much urgency because then it becomes desperation. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Any, what are your that's, thoughts on that? No, that's, that's, it's huge. You know, we talk a lot about, I've been mean, trying to wrap my head around everything. You know, my, my wife's family, they own a large business. They've been doing it 102 years now. They still stop. I mean, they're, they're open 24 hours a day, six days a week. Big company. They still shut the business down or give people the opportunity. You, you know, take off 
for an hour every week, or an hour, I think it's an hour, hour and a half, come out and they do Bible study in their giant conference room. Mm. And it's yeah. like, that's what they've done. They've done it since they had five employees and now they have 300. Same thing. And, you know, you talk about taking a step back and and doing it from the ground up, building that solid foundation. You know, we just had a big vision campaign at our church and we're building a big sports complex. And it's, hey, the more people we can get here, the better, the better off we're going to be. And it's mm-hmm. not... Let's grow the church from a money standpoint. It's not doing anything other than we just want people here, hear about Christ, hear about his love for you, and give a positive message in a world that's not always so positive. And- dude, I, dude, let me tell you, I totally agree. We have a church around the corner from us that's huge, like 2,000. Like, wow, I'm in the capital, so I'm in, a big, I'm in a big city, and there's – I don't know what the number is now, but there's tons of tons of people. I think we're well yeah. over a million in the greater Columbia area, but there's a church that is near us. And it's a really good church. We like it. And they had, they have youth sports. Yeah. And we, I coach soccer there this season for my daughter and my son. They were on the same team. And I can't tell you how many people they, they get in their doors that they never would have came on Sunday, but they come to church because of soccer. Like, I think half the kids on my team, there was 10, uh, had no affiliation with church or that church. Yeah. And, you know, when when I asked or whatever. And so I love the idea of your church doing that. I think it's a huge way to reach families is to offer them things that they're already doing in their life outside of your church and saying, you know, we have an opportunity and we'll serve and love on you that way. Let me let me go back to something we were talking about. Um to bring it back to our listeners. So if I could, if, if, I, I try to imagine this sometimes, Ben, we have somewhere between three and 500 listeners pretty consistently on YouTube or whatever, yeah. all the forums, it's hard to track, but I try to imagine them all standing in front of me on the camera. As I say this, there's so many of them that are going to be listening to this right now on their mowers they're doing invoicing through Jobber right now. They're uh, stressing out about how they're going to make payroll, you know, while they're listening to this. And if I could say one thing about, and I want to hear your thoughts on it, is like you mentioned time, uh, maybe last episode, but to the guy listening right now, do not over- underestimate how important it is to be doing something of value with your business rather than doing something that just brings monetary value. And because you will be empty. I can't tell you how many people I talked to who had successful business on paper or in their bank account, marriage, absolutely broken, divorce, ruined. I can't tell you how many people I talked to that, like you said, million dollar revenue, break even because they have all this debt and they're freak they're freaking out. I've told the story many times. I, I talked to a guy last year to quip who ran up to me. He ran up to me and was like, Alex, I'm like, Hey, I don't know you. He goes, I listen to the podcast. I'm a million dollars in revenue. I made $28,000 profit. What the heck do I do? And he was stressed and we, he almost cried. So it's like, I don't know what, what I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, Ben, because clearly you know, you want to be back in the game and you're going to get back in the game, but you've made the choice over these last several years to um, sit on the sidelines while you heal up, grow your family, do what's best for your family. What do you tell the guy who's listening right now who doesn't know if he can keep the doors open or he's uber successful, but he's empty inside? Yeah. So, so there's a guy um, who who I don't and, I, and when we talk about something like this, like people's names are just running through my head. I, I am very big on having a support system. You've got a you've got a wife, a spouse, a girlfriend. Great. Do you have a dad? Do you have a mom? Great. Like I have a great father. Great childhood. Great mother. Great father. Still married. But do you have that unaffiliated person in your life? And I get emotional talking about it, that you can call on. And I mean, the guy that, that's got it going on. I mean, great, great family, great husband. You know, he's not just a great husband that, you know, on paper, he's yeah. doing things with his wife and kids. 
is he doing it with the business? My, my guy's name is Robert Cox. Okay. He just retired. He just sold his company uh, two years ago. I don't know how much money. I mean, it, it was substantial. But the guy that. had it going on. And that is what you cannot take for granted when you're building a business and when you own a business. You have got to have somebody that you can call on at night, in the middle of the day, someone you know from Green and just go, look, yeah. my wife and I got an argument. Here's what's going on. Can you help me? You know, hey, I'm not turning a profit in my business. Can you take a look at my books and see what's going on? Having that support system of yeah. that unaffiliated person that's not family, not spouse, but still someone that you can trust, a confidant, as we talk a lot about, that's important. And, and I had one of those, and I still do. I mean, the guy I saw the guy three weeks ago when I was over in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. He lives in Georgetown now. Um, he is still my guy till this day, and he probably will be. I mean, he probably will be till the day he dies. And it's and it's now it's just hey family stuff or yeah, you know. But finding that guy that was going to invest in you that you can invest in them that's huge. I love that. Yes, and as we talk about in church, that's discipleship. You know, one on one is um pouring into others from who's poured into you, vice versa. And that's the key about pouring is you have to have something in your cup to be able to pour. And that's yeah. why I go back to the life balance wheel. Like exactly. if you don't have balance in your life, cause there's no such thing as work life balance. Like what does that even yeah. mean? But that's why I like the balance. I got that from C12. C12 has a, 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 a balance wheel. And I kind of glean, I pretty much took that idea and made it six things that I think a little more specific um, for, because I think that is it. If you, why do we feel, why do we feel so out of control as business owners? Because we don't have any type of balance. Yeah. Like if you're just reading books all day, what does that really get you? If you're not using that education, right? That's why education is a part of the balance wheel. If you're only working out and being a meathead, what does that do for your relationships, your family, whatever? Mm -hmm. Like there's gotta be balance. <laughs> I remember it not. I just thought of, uh, are you a Star Wars fan? I, I, I am personally not, but I know enough to, to balance in the four. Well, just, you know, I like Star Wars a little bit because the force is sort of like the Holy spirit. I always saw is like, yeah. Um, and you know, Yoda says something in one of the movies where he's like, there's gotta be balance to the force. There's gotta be balance in the galaxy. And so I just thought of that for that's some a, reason. That's a good but, point. I mean, you talk about the force and talk about the forces with you and, and all that. And, and I think as a Christian, okay, and you do make that decision to follow Christ and accept Christ into your heart, I do feel like, you know, that force, we're doing a big study right now, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is in with you. Mm -hmm. And you can and you can feel that and you can feel it put, tugging you in certain different, different directions, you know. 100%. That, that you I want to go back to what you said. You said, you know, when you tell that guy that, that ran up to you and hugged you and said, you know, I'm doing a million dollars. I'm not making any money. What's wrong? And it's just, I, I want to grab him by the shoulders and go slow down. Just yeah. take a step back and look at your life and go to your, go to your wheel and put it all on paper and figure yeah. out what's wrong. Yep. Yeah. Because you can't I, keep I just, running 100 miles an hour in the same direction if you're not going anywhere. 100%. I just talked to one of our guys the other day about this, uh, one of our crew guys, because there does become a point where your business is almost indestructible at a certain revenue unless you let it blow up. Meaning what I told this guy was like, hey, go cut the 300 grand that doesn't make you any money and you've still got a $700,000 business that's profitable. and it's weird how our minds play tricks on us that way. It's like, we think it's all, we got to go all or nothing. Like, yeah. it, you know, I, I love the, I actually love the phrase burn the ships. Like, Hey, yeah. I'm all in. I'm not taking the ships back and having an exit strategy, but you shouldn't have that about your business in terms of like, Hey, if it, if it's going poorly, I'm just going to let it go poorly. Um, but cause once that guy was making 80,000 a month, it's like, dude, just make 50 grand and be profitable. Like it doesn't make sense. So I don't know. So true. Um, so true. Yeah. Everybody is so caught up on the top line yeah. when it's the bottom line. It's like, guys, yeah. if, if you're doing $200,000 a year in top line revenue, but you're making a hundred grand, that's a lot better than the guy who's doing a million in top line revenue and making a hundred grand. He's right. got, 
he's got 900,000 of loss something. And this guy yeah. over here is running a great profitable business. I mean, in the business I'm in now, I, I don't do a ton of it. I mean, I do 10 million, 12 million a year in sales. It's great, but I make money. Okay. Right. I, I, I say no to the jobs that don't make me money. Why? Because that's time I can spend with my kids, my fit. If I'm, if it's going to be a loss later, if I'm going to make no money, I'll go make no money playing with my daughter at the playground. I'm not going to do it building that. a wall for somebody who may complain about it. Yeah. Just, or sue you. Yeah. Or, I mean, just that. Or go on simple. Facebook and say, Ben Bishop's such a bad guy. Oh my guy. gosh. And, and like social oh media, social media <laughs> is a, it's a blessing and a curse. Okay. I'm it 33 is. years old. I love social media. I find it awesome. But good Lord, the, the <laughs> amount of negative support we give each other on there. I mean, I'm on a landscape page of page today, and they're just dogging this kid about building this wall. And I'm like, dude, he's, this might be his first one. Like, let him figure it out. We've all. Was it, was it, was it lawn life? I forget what it was. It was one of those. I don't know. It was one I was scrolling and just read it. But these people were just dogging this guy. And I'm like, let's build each other up. I know. Like, let's make a point to not say anything negative. You know, I, I, I saw something the other day, and Alex, and then I'm turning it back to you. But I no, no, I'm good. Please keep going, like, please. And it was a pastor who said, he, it was a guy sitting on the front porch with a pastor. The pastor was telling a story. And the guy said, I've never heard a pastor cuss. And the pastor looked at him and was like, let, let me just tell you. He goes, you know, I, I apologize for that. And the guy said, you know what? What are your thoughts on that? And the pastor said, I don't mind cussing. I have a bigger problem with you sitting on the front porch and talking bad about your neighbor than I do you using a cuss word. And that, to me, blew my mind two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I was like, we have got to pick each other up. We are in an industry where it's a service industry. We've got really hard clients these days. We've yeah. got really hard critics. But if we are riding by every yard going, that dude's stripes suck, like, <laughs> maybe they did. You know, maybe they did. But it's okay. Teach him. Take the moment to teach them. Take the moment to pull that comment offline and send the guy a private message and go, yeah. what can I, ah, man, I just support in this world. We need it. We do. And, and the thing that, I, I even need to get better at is like me saying that isn't going to make my kid uh, go to sleep better that night. So who the freak cares? <laughs> why, why do I care about his stripes? Like, yeah. why do I care now? So I don't know if you know, we started a Facebook group called the landscapers lounge yeah. and it's like up to almost 600 members and we don't allow any negative comments. Like yeah. I can't, because now I got so frustrated by the couple groups I was in uh, God, what's the one that's always bad? Lawn life is can get pretty negative, and then there's one more. But it's just like, what you got? First off, if you want to get me on my soapbox, it's guys who don't even know what the heck they're talking about that are yeah. usually the most negative. You know, they're like, know your worth, and they're making no money. It's like you don't get to say know your worth when you're broke. Okay, don't you love that phrase that landscapers yeah. say? It's like know your value. It's like. <laughs> You're getting you're not getting any jobs, so you obviously don't know your value either. Yeah. Uh, huh? It's insecurity. Producer Max says insecurity. Yeah, and exactly. It's Mac. like they exactly. just get on there to feel better about themselves. Like they comment all night. Yeah. Um, I mean, driving a hundred thousand so, dollar truck with ten thousand dollars worth of equipment behind it. You know. know your dude, I have been in the economy right now. I can't tell you how many guys I've been seeing selling stuff left and right. <gasps> It's I a had a guy, you dream. know what's funny? I want to tell you this. I had a guy DM me two days ago after I did a little video. Um, I did like a little inspirational video about like, it, it must be nice. Like how people say that. Yeah, and, I was oh to, and I was, and I was trying to tell people like, if people say that to you, you should say, yeah, it is because I worked really hard. You, if, if people, you know, if people say that to you. Oh, and I, I, some, my, my favorite is when people are like, people are like, Oh, it must be nice to drive a truck like that. I'm like, dude, it is. Like, you have no – and I don't drive, like, a new truck. I mean, I drive, like, a yeah. 2020 F-150 XLT. I'm very sure. hard on trucks, okay? I love to hunt, love to fish, very hard on trucks. I buy every truck with 75,000 miles on it, and I sell them with 150. That's how yeah. I'm raised. I, every one of them's like, must be nice. I'm like, it is. Like, it's really nice You want to get in? You want to test it out? It's truck. great. Yeah. Yeah, it's a four-year-old truck. It's really nice. Like, it's all I need, you know? Does what I need to. 
And but that, so the video I so the video I made the video I made a guy DM me. I have no idea who this is. Let me see if I can. Uh, I'm not going to say. Maybe I will say his name. <laughs> I, I watched oh. the video and I laughed. I was like, "Yeah, you tell." Where is this guy? Let's see here. Where'd he go? I'm going to find him. David Murray. He comments, he replied to my story. He said, didn't you bankrupt your company? (laughs) And I was like, I was like, dude, maybe you have the wrong guy. Not me. So David, if you're listening, wasn't me. No go idea where that came first, from. Go back to the first part, David, when we talked about selling the business. Go back to that part. Um, there was no, I, it's, that's like, uh, I, I think there, I've got a couple haters in the green industry because of my positions on this stuff. Yeah. Um, especially like that I tell some others, like, hey, don't, don't squeeze all these young kids' melons and take all their money when you don't know what you're talking about. Um, I had a cool interaction with Sean Spencer actually yesterday. You know, Sean Spencer from Spencer's Lawn Care, big uh, YouTuber. Yeah. yeah. Sean, I've stuff. only met a couple of times. I think we, eh, we've met three or four times. That's not true. And um, we never really had a conversation though, but he's always been nice to me online. But Sean had posted a video where he said, um, you don't need to, to any of these guys trying to sell you a course or whatever. Don't listen to him. You can find everything for free on YouTube. And I commented back, all of our courses are free, just to like, just so people know. Every course we have currently is free. And I sent him a video message because we've talked several times. I said, hey, just so you know, I couldn't agree more with what you're saying with all these guys. Like, there's a lot of young guys right now from TikTok, especially, who are like, come to, there's one in particular I'm not going to say because, but come to ABC University. And for $1,000 an hour, I'll tell you how to grow your lawn care business. And I'm 21, by the way, with three employees. So it's like, there's a lot of that. And a lot of these young guys are paying these guys. I even had a horror story this year where a guy, I got to be careful here, but a guy that I used to do some business coaching with, great young, young kid. He, one of these guys convinced him, he's young, to sell him part of their his company. And he and he did like he's doing like 200 grand in revenue and he sold 25% of his company cuz one of these 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 buzzards uh convinced him otherwise. So Sean was talking about that person is what he ended up saying. He and I talked back and forth in video. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I couldn't agree more. But on the flip side of that, then it makes the people like I like we try to be we're producing all this podcast, we're producing free courses, we're doing I say my pricing, 159 bucks a month to be a part of our crew crew yeah. membership. That is not a lot of money. It's seventeen hundred bucks a year. It's to get. And it's twenty six calls plus fifty to sixty calls with me, which end up being five to six hours. Yeah. To me, that's a pretty dang good return. Okay. Great, so right. I have no problem saying it out loud. Cause if I if I have a problem, then I have a problem with my pricing, right? Yeah. And so know your worth, Alex. Know your worth. Know your worth. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying is is there are good points that I would, I happily pay C12 was not cheap. It was a thousand dollars a month to be a part of it. Guess what? That was worth every penny from what I've learned today about how to do business as a ministry. There are yeah, value based. Life. I mean, hundred percent your business, but shaped your life too. hundred percent, which like, affects my businesses. Huge. And all I'm saying with this little bit of a tyrant or rant or or speech here is there are things that make sense monetarily to spend money on producer Mac asked me like a three weeks ago. Hey, there's this package. I want to buy this. It's going to help me train. Let's do it. Like, I just don't like when people say it's all or nothing, right? We're like, man, you got to spend 20 grand and I'll help your business. So it's like, that's crazy. But like, Oh man, you should only listen to stuff. That's free. That, that doesn't make sense either because there's got to be, you've got to, like, I can't call every guy that asked me to call for free 10 hours, a, 20 hours a week. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to catch, you're going to catch some from this podcast from Ben, who's, you know, from people that are like, hey, Ben's, Ben's not in the day to day anymore. He's not grinding anymore. It's like, yeah, I, I'm not on a mower anymore, but I'm in business. Okay. I'm not sitting at home. I mean, I'm in business. Yeah. I'm still in the horticulture industry. I still understand being profitable. I still understand how to run a company. And that's really kind of where I find, I see my role now is like helping people 
grow long lasting businesses and creating wealth for their family, but wealth in monetary aspects, but more importantly in your marriage, your kids, the stuff that matters. And, and, and that's what I want to do is just really help be a better coach to these people. And it's hard, you know, everyone's like, well, you're not on the mower. I'm like, I'm not on the mower, but good business people aren't on the mower all the time. They're not. (laughs) Like, I know it's, it's bananas. I know it's really weird. The sometimes the sentiments of that are so strange to me. Um, I think the goat of our industry is Corey Ballard. I've said it many, many times. Yeah. I, I don't know if there's I mean, many better could, than I him. I wish he got his shirts in like larges instead of like youth <laughs> mediums, but he, he might hear this. So I hope so. Cause he listens sometimes, you know, um, I'm just saying, we can get you a bigger size, but you he, look good. He is yoked. I'm telling you. I'm going. He's uh, so we're gonna, ripped. So ripped. He is, he is and he's very. Dude, I'm hum- he's like very 32 hum- years old. I'm like, dude, you he's, look younger than me. He's humble about it too, which is pretty fun. But he's a good dude. Um, he is a good dude. But what I what I'm saying is is um, Corey had been on a mower in 15 years, right? Yeah. But every, everyone respects and listens to him. It's not about like being in the day to day on a mower still anymore. It's about what have you learned? What value can you bring and how can you help other people? And I yeah, don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear you write a book about how to grow a lawn care business when you've had one employee. Stop. I don't want to hear it. I cannot yeah. stand that. And you There's can't so write many a people. business book by not doing business. No, like you can't you've, stand you've it. You've mowed grass. You haven't owned and ran a successful company for a long time. You've made money. That's not a lie. But you haven't run a business. And, you know, we talk a lot about oh, steps before I, before I jump off. And, you know, we talk yeah, a lot about spiritual stakes in, along your journey. Mm-hmm. You know, you can see where stuff's changed your life throughout. I don't think because I don't think becoming a Christian, you know, is, hey, I did it. My life has changed forever. It's, hey, I did it. And then four years later, something else happened in my spiritual life that created another stake. And I think the same is in business. Like you're running a business, but what's your next stake? Mm-hmm. And then what's your next one? And your next one? And your next one? Keep keep pushing, keep pushing the limits. Each time you reach a ceiling, raise the roof, right? But do it right. Do it right, do it right. and respectfully. I'm with you on that. Everybody, this has been me, Alex Kirby, and Ben Bishop here at the Green Up Academy podcast, where we help you level up your green industry business. You guys can find Ben. Um, well, actually, I'm not going to plug your personal one, Ben. Whenever you, you launch can, your new you company. You can plug it if you okay. want to. I mean, I'm, I, I have I my cell phone with me 24-7. Shoot me a text. I'd love to talk. I love okay. meeting people. Love it. Love Email Ben. People. How about this? Got it. Email Ben at ben.bishop1 at yahoo.com if you want to chat with him. Yeah. Sounds like Ben and I, which, by the way, guys, Ben and I have never talked until these podcasts, so it feels like talking to an old friend. Sounds like Ben nice. and I might have some discussions here talking about other stuff in the future. I loved it, Ben, so much. Um, you guys make sure you hit me up at Alex at the green up um, dot com for, if you have any questions for me and, uh, thanks producer Mac as always. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks guys. See you guys.